Hi, it's the Salvadoran warrior again, here to talk about a, another class mod character in the Darkest Dungeon. The difference is that um, this class uh, mod character is actually one of my favorites. And I had a blast with this character. Um, you know, I love the idea of planting three markers at the same time. And I took her to the Darkest Dungeon and she came out alive. So already this is a good character um, overall. Uh, it may look like she's kind of weak, but she's actually really, really, really strong. I'm here to present to you the Butcher Bird, an old lady that just was accused of the wrong crimes and survived by fighting. <laughs> With that said, um, I will be talking about her base stats, her resistances, combat skills, and camping skills. And along with her trinkets. So before anything, uh, like and subscribe. Um, make comments. I would love to hear what your opinions are of this character. If you used her as well. And of course, I will leave links in the description on this character. And from what I've been doing with most of my videos. Uh, I've been leaving timestamps. In case you want to watch the combat first. Before anything or maybe you just want to see the character and figure it out yourself. But if you're confused about this class character or anything, um, I guess watch the whole video. Um, I know they're kind of long, and it's probably my fault because I go on tangents sometimes. But the combat is something that I like to show off, and most of these Darkest Dungeon um, combat matches tend to take a while. So, But yeah, um, let's get started. So, this is the Butcher's Bird. Um, here's her base stats. Um, I, um, she has like a pretty low like HP pool, but her crit is pretty high. Her dodge numbers are pretty high. And her speed is also pretty high. So, she has really good stats overall. Uh, the damage, however, is something that you need to, like, um, kind of boost a little bit. Or if you're not too concerned about that, you can just focus on the other things she can do in her combat skills. But we'll talk about that later. For now, um, you know, damage isn't impressive, but with crit and the dodge numbers, it is still really, really good and well-desired. So, she's not, you know, she's not bad. The stats are good. Her resistances, however, is, well, I'll let you be the judge. Because these are without the trinkets or, like, the terrible um, quirks that the game likes to throw at you. The stun is pretty okay. She won't get poisoned anytime soon because it's at 110%. Uh, she has a pretty high resistance on diseases. She could disarm traps. Debuffs isn't an issue. Bleed isn't an issue. But a slightly lower move resistance. So she will get pushed around if at the right moment. But that's okay because she has answers to, um, to those things. If they move her to the fourth position, she has an ability to get put in the first position. If she's in the uh, first, second, or third, she has moves to push her back. So, in other words, she's totally okay if you push her around because she'll push back. Um, overall, base stats is amazing. Well, not amazing. It's, it's good. Base stats are good. Resistances is slightly decent. So, there you go. Let's get into the combat skills. The one thing that I really, really want to talk about because they're all amazing. The first one is Basting. Basting 
is a move that can be used in positions 1 through 3 and can hit the enemies from 1 through 3. The accuracy is at 115, but the crit is a plus 7%. On hit, she'll be able to proc bleed for 4 points of damage for 3 rounds. This is probably one of her best moves if you're planning to bleed somebody. Um, overall, it's just really good for enemies with high um, protection. And if you stab this person like two to three times, the bleed numbers will keep adding and adding. Of course, you have to keep mindful of enemies that are resistant to bleeds. So if that's your type of gameplay, um, I recommend you throw her with a hero that can proc um, by lowering bleed resistance or throw a trinket that increases a chance to bleed because it's not going to be like all the time. But for enemies that are weak on bleed, oh yeah, you're going to have a lot of fun with this character. Um, that's all I got to say. The next combat skill is Overcasting. Overcasting is an ability that can be used in positions 1 through 3 and is an AoE move that can hit from 1 through 3. Um, the accuracy is pretty low of 110. The damage is a negative 60. Crit is at a plus 2. But on hit, it shall bleed for like 3 points. Also on hit, there's a debuff. If the enemy is hit by this move and they don't get bled, they will experience a 20% negative um, debuff on bleed. So if they're at 100 bleed and this hits, it will lower it to 80% bleed resistance instead of the 100. This doesn't mean you can hit this on skeletons. <laughs> Overall, it's it's still a good move because if you want to proc bleed um, on the first, second, and third position, this is perfect. And it's really, really perfect if um, you're somewhere in an area where the enemies are super weak to bleed, like the Crimson Court. Um, this is a really, really good move. And I use this move all the time when I'm ready to bleed. It's similar to the Houndmaster. But not as super amazing as the Houndmaster because the Houndmaster hits all four enemies. So, you know, take it as it is. I still think it's a good move. And it could be used in positions 1 to 3 as I said earlier. So, this is also really good. No matter what position she's in, she's going to do it. <laughs> the next... um combat skill is skewer it's an ability that also has a low accuracy but um, yeah it has low accuracy the damage is a negative 50% the crit is at plus 2% but it can hit the back row I forgot to mention that it can be used in positions 1 to 2 and can hit the enemy's position of 3 to 4 on hit it should shuffle the back row and give them negative 15% of protection, negative 10 accuracy. So this is really good to um, bring the back row forward. And if somehow they don't get um, shuffled, at least they'll have the negative 10 accuracy. So they won't throw that dumb juice at you. This is also really good um, if that's your strategy. Um, Overall, that is all I have to say about that. Um, it's not the strongest move. It is just there to um, apply a debuff. That's the only reason why this move exists. Um, to get the back row to lower its accuracy so the back row won't have to ruin your team composition. So, this is really good. Really, really good. Um, before I continue... With these low accuracy numbers, it should also give you a hint that um, um, having accuracy on the Butcher Bird 
is a good idea to place. So whatever accuracy trinkets you have, give it to her. She's going to need them. You want to make sure these moves hit all the time because the debuffs and the, um, the, you know, the bleed on hit is really, really good. And you want to make sure these moves are hitting all the time. Now, let's talk about the next one, which is one of my favorites. Swoop is a um, combat skill that can only be used in positions 4. And only position 4, but it can hit positions 1 through 4 on the enemy side. This, accuracy, this move is 150 accuracy has a damage mod of 44%, crit mod at 10%, bypasses guard, breaks guard, and if the enemy is bleeding, blighted, or marked, it will do a bonus damage of 53%. However, if it's hit, she moves all the way to position one, and she marks herself, and um that's it she just marks herself and having yourself marked is really dangerous but the enemy uh won't have the privilege to be guarded so that's the decent thing about um this move so with the downside of being marked Everything that this move um, stands for is really, really, really good. It's probably like one of my favorite moves to use when she's in position four. However, you're probably wondering, well, how is it good? Um, most of her um, other combat skills that we're getting close to uh, shuffles her around. And um, if you have um, a team that can do bleeding lights or even marks she will capitalize on that and make sure that enemy gets it and it's probably one of my favorites it's it's a really really good move really really good move and even if you know that the enemy is being protected even better you break their guards and that's a free kill um for you and your team free kill one of my favorites don't underestimate this move but if you choose not to use it, that's okay, because her other combat skills are also really good. Like the next one. The next one, the next combat skill is um, Rectify. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It is a buff ability that can be used in all positions. And it gives everyone a plus six dodge, um, plus four speed, and a plus ten crit. Plus 10 crit is a godsend. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, just it's just good. <laughs> uh, a, a, a plus on six on dodge still um, is fairly decent. And ha giving everyone uh, plus four on speed, again, I always question it because I'm deciding whether or not I want to because it might ruin some strats I have for the team. But a plus 10 on crit is something that I welcome because that's just too good. That's just too good. That's all I got to say about this move. Plus 10 crit is just too good to pass up. Her next um, combat skill is actually a guard skill called Devotion. Devotion is a, a move that can be used in all positions. It moves her forward and guards an ally, and it activates a repose. Now, this repose um, gives herself plus 24 points of, of dodge, 8% crit, but gives her a negative penalty on damage on 25%. So, this move is also good too if you want to protect somebody. And I get it, you know, I get it. She has the lowest HP for a, a character but you like highwaymen they both have like high dodge numbers 
and I can't ignore dodge numbers. If they're somewhere around you know, like 50, okay, fine, they're gonna get hit. But anything above 50 is insane. So the Butcher Bird has lots of answers to not get hit. And she can do it. She can do it. So I don't even care if she gets a negative 25 on, on damage. The crit is what gives her the advantage. And that is why I love the Butcher's Bird. Her last combat skill is probably one of her best combat skills in the game. Of course, obviously, you can choose not to use it, which I'm going to come to that soon. But just, just hear me out. The last one is called Scold. It is a combat skill that can be used in positions 1 through 3 and can hit an AoE of 1 through 3 on the enemy side. And it pushes her back with an accuracy of 110. It doesn't do damage because it has a negative 100% on damage. It bypasses stealth and can mark targets. And when they're marked, they are hit with a negative of 14 damage and 18 dodge. Forget, forget the debuff target. Look at how many people she can mark. Three. The one problem that most um, mark synergy teams is that everyone has to mark their own targets. So that way their next turn, they'll be able to do it. Sometimes you don't have to because um, they'll have other strats to do. But overall, a mark synergy team needs to have synergy. The Butcher's Bird's move, Scold, just says, I'm the synergy. Don't worry, you guys do your thing. And the best part is, if you have this move and this move, this is all you're going to have to, you know, worry about. If you don't get your, you know, full AoE mark, you can always rely on using Devotion to put yourself forward again. So that way you can do it once more. And on your next turn, you use this move, and then you get put in the first position. You do this, and once you're ready to mark again, you do this, and you keep on doing it until you get put into positions two or three. So that way, you can choose to guard an ally, and move your back to positions two, or, or whatever. You can do whatever you want with this character. You don't even have to do this. Sometimes, with other characters that like to apply bleed, I like to do this. This is also really good because you're not, you're only in these positions. Oh yeah, I forgot. You're only in these positions and um, you can give the enemy, like, I mean the enemy, you can give your allies these type of buffs. And then for you and your bleeding buddy, like the flagellant, you can just bleed all day and just do that. Or, if you're worried about the back position, you can do this too. Or, if you don't want to do the whole uh, repose thing, you can also do this. Or, if you really, really want those marked things, you can also do this. But make sure you have this, you can put yourself back in these positions. There, there's a lot of cool things you can do with the Butcher's Bird. She's very versatile in any of these positions, and you'll still wreck. You'll still wreck. Like, you'll make the enemy beg for mercy because after all, she's the butcher's bird, man. Um, her story is in the link in the description with, of course, the chance for you to download this character. This character is amazing in combat and she's one of my top favorites in class mods. So enough of the praise. <laughs> I got a little excited because again, this character was the first character to go in the darkest dungeon. And I was worried that she was going to die, but I'm glad she made it through. And yeah, man, <laughs> it was amazing how she came out. Now, let's talk about her camping skills. <laughs> uh, like I said, oh, most, con um, mod cl most class mod characters 
come with your basic camping skills. Obviously, she has four unique ones. So her first one is called Protecting the Nest. Now, only on the self, she suffers 40 HP of damage. But it is a, per a nightmare prevention skill with a negative 30% chance of getting surprised at the enemy and a plus 30% in scouting the dungeon. So I usually um, praise most uh, camping skills when it comes to nightmare preventions and suffering free HP is just the big price you pay for using this ability. So even though you suffer free HP, a nightmare prevention skill is a nightmare prevention skill. In other words, it's good. Her next uh, camping skill is Sharpened Beak. It's a time cost 3 and she gives herself um, 10 accuracy and melee skills and 11% of crit. This lasts for 4 battles. That is also pretty good. Like I said, I usually complain about her accuracy sometimes, but that's okay. Because she, she can just give herself the accuracy with her capping skills. And um, that 11 crit is also fairly decent. However, it is an odd number. And it just raises some concern. I don't usually like odd numbers. If it's even, then I could be okay with that. Odds, ugh, they just make me nervous. And I might throw off my math. Um... Keep in mind, I, I'm not really good at math. <laughs> um, but you know what? Screw it. It, it. It's a good, it's a good camping skill. Ten accuracy, pretty good. Um, and it's cheap. It's 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 a time cost three. So, pretty good. The next camping skill is mending clothes. This one is a time cost two, and she relieves herself with a negative six stress, and she can also relieve someone else's stress by negative eight, and give them a 25% um, stress resistance. This lasts for four battles. It's pretty good. You mend someone's clothes, it's all right. It's a, it's a stress reliever, so, it's fine. Um, I know. I know she doesn't give herself a huge number to um, relieve her stress, but she gives her companions a lot of points to stress out. If this was two points higher, oh man, I think it would have been really, really good. But for now, it's 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 okay. It's not super bad. It's pretty good. Her last uh, camping skill is once upon a time now this one is probably her most interesting it's a time cost for where she stress herself out less by negative 30 points of stress all companions um will receive a negative 35 points of stress and that's an 80 percent chance or a 20 percent chance of getting a plus 14 of stress. Now, this combat skill is really good. Uh, going back to mending clothes, I, I, I complained that if the points was a little higher, this would have been like really good. But this one is just super good due to the fact that you give yourself negative 30 while everyone else gets negative 35. However, it is a weird coin flip of 80% chance versus 20%. And I remember on my on my other review um, videos, I complained about how like there were these odd um, numbers that were just too close to each other and I didn't feel like gambling. But if you want to gamble, there it is. This is one of those cool gambles where you see two aces aces of cards and you have a good chance of winning 21 either by doubling down or just 
staying with it because even if you go over you can always change that ace card to a one i think that's how that works feel free to criticize me about that on the comments i'm just saying gambling for a negative um 35 of stress is really good when you're gambling against a 20 percent chance of plus 14 of stress really 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 good overall her camping skills are good there's only one that i don't like but everything else is really good you pay the price for a night prevention skill and i think it's worth it you got um you know giving yourself 10 accuracy but you know that odd numbers like you know whatever's who cares it's 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 still good because you get that 10 accuracy um you get to pull off a little stress with one of your companions and then you got this you tell everyone stories like that time when the butcher bird had to go to shelbyville and i won't make that joke anymore because it's gonna take too long what i'm trying to say is this camping skill is really good due to the fact of the high numbers betting against a a low number that can give you a negative but that's okay it's good it's good overall her camping skills are super good her combat skills are really good and um from what you see on the bottom these are the two trinkets that i slapped on and i never removed because they ended up being really good to her in the end um giving her a lot of dodges and damage is also fairly good if you want to give her some accuracy you can if you want to give her more crit you can um there's a lot of things you can do with her and she'll still be amazing she'll still be amazing one final thing about the butcher's bird before i come to um composition she likes to say a random line when she does get her crits and um i thought it was fairly funny um you know what you'll see <laughs> if you if you watch what she can do on the field and she says the thing you too will laugh your ass off if not i i, I might as well tell you she says be gone thought now I'm, i don't know if that was there for a meme or thought meant something else to her in a different timeline i just thought it was really funny <laughs> as for team composition um i usually went in there with the hound master of course you gotta have your healer and a um a bounty hunter which um not on this list. I hope he didn't die. Oh, you know what happened? I went in there with Guts because um, of this move right here. But I'll talk about Guts in a future video. But before Guts, um, well, I was running with a Mark Synergy team, but, you know, it, it, they didn't have to do the marking because she was responsible with that so you throw the marking on the enemy and you know houndmaster and bounty hunter are going to be in positions two to one and they're going to rank up a lot of damage because they can and it's just going to be insane overall i highly recommend you try the butcher's bird it's a really really good hero and you know she wrecks she she applies marks she applies bleeding and um if you get really comfortable with her you can even try her bleeding skills with the flagellant and see how crazy you guys can take bleeding to its new level and more importantly um if you really really like her um the creator also made trinkets for her for the crimson court and the color of madness which i will also leave links in the description if you're curious to try something like that so until then i will after this video ends you will see what she's like in combat and um etc etc i'll leave a timestamp in the description with the class mod 
and the creators and all that what all that whatnot until then you guys stay safe and have